Now, joining us today on Dallas Fanzine is Ken Kirchival, who was known to millions of fans around the world as JR's arch enemy Cliff Barnes on Dallas. And he was also the man who was, well, kind of half responsible for the Barnes Ewing feud. Ken, we really appreciate you taking time out to speak with us today. I'm glad to be here. Do you remember the first scene that you filmed in Texas? I know, I think it was kind of a, unusual to see yeah. snow on the television show Dallas, uh, but there was a lot of snow uh, in, in Texas exactly. at that time. Yeah, I remember exactly. It was a scene between uh, uh, my Victoria Principal and myself. She had come home and she announced that she was going to marry Bobby Ewing. Oh, dear. And I, I followed her up to her apartment telling her she was out of her mind. <laughs> and it was absolutely frigid that day yeah. and it was the first shot that had ever been filmed on Dallas mm. yeah remember it well if, if, if I'm not mistaken I believe you also wore your own clothes uh, on screen during some of the first few episodes yeah I had this marvelous sheep uh, sheepskin jacket yeah I remember uh, that yeah I, and I, I've often wondered I've often wondered where in the hell did, where in the hell did that go to I'd like to have that I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea what happened to it I'm sure it's still knocking around somewhere. Now, the character of Cliff Barnes uh, seemed to have a multi-layered personality. Did you like the character of Cliff? I loved him, yeah. Mm. yeah. One thing that I enjoyed most about it, because, you know, I could just take him kind of any direction I wanted to take him. And that was enjoyable, rather than just a pat, hello, da-da-da, okay, here's so-and-so, okay, mm. here he is again. You know, it gave me as an actor a great opportunity to to uh, just take him all kinds of places. Now, one of my favorite scenes in what's now known as the shoebox scene, it was a scene between you and Barbara Bel Geddes where Cliff and Miss Ellie discussed Digger and Jock, uh, with Cliff, of course, finally accepting that the Barnes-Ewing feud is over. Uh, can you tell us some of your memories of the wonderful Barbara Bel Geddes? Barbara and I, I was closer to Barbara than to anybody else in the cast. I think Bar Barbara and I, we, uh, well, we both came from the stage originally, mm. and I think that's where the bond started. I know she used to always say to me, oh, Kenny, if I were only five years younger and you were five years older. <laughs> interestingly, uh, interestingly, uh, when she passed away, why Larry called me and asked me how to get a hold of her. Yeah. And uh, I called her number, which it was not working. And I thought, well, because he wanted to send flowers or something like mm. that. And so I thought, well, wait a minute. So uh, I called the local police station. And I said, do you have any idea where uh, Miss Bel Geddes will be? So they gave me the name of this, uh, this uh, funeral parlor. So I called there, and I left a message. And uh, it was a private ceremony. And I left a message, and... Oh, I don't know. About a week or so later, I got a call from her daughter. Hmm. And uh, she was just thanking me for being in touch. And Barbara, I had been at Barbara's home in uh, Maine with my wife at the time. And she had taken this marvelous, marvelous picture of Barbara and I together. And I had given it to, um, I'd given a copy of it to Barbara. And I had signed, what do you mean I'm too old? And her daughter said that when she was in her in her mother's house, which she was, she says, you know, my mother had that picture on her dresser in the bedroom. Wow. I said, wow, how sweet that is. Yeah. And she says, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I said, what you don't understand? She said, that's the only picture she had. She didn't have a picture of me there. <laughs> <laughs> it was really sweet. Yeah. That was a nice scene, but that was not my favorite scene. What was your favorite my scene? Favorite, my, my favorite scene was when I first met my mother, when she came to my apartment. Yeah. And uh, it was it was very tender. And then I became very upset because I found out that she had lived all all of my life, maybe a hundred miles away, and never contacted me. And I got very upset with her. And she said it was time to leave. And at the door, I reached over and picked up a bowl of candy that had been a favorite. And I said, but you didn't get your candy. Yeah. It was a, was I, I, I've heard, I've heard hundreds of comments about that scene. I remember yeah. that scene fondly, uh, Ken, and very emotional oh. as well it was. It was a, it, 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 and you know, talk about varying, 
Mm. It had it had every element in it, from yeah. uh, joy of seeing her to becoming angry to becoming a, a, a little tiny boy. Yeah, it was it was marvelous. When Victoria Principal came to you and said that she was leaving the show in 1987, did you have concerns about the direction of the Cliff Barnes character? Because the two of you kind of shared so much screen time together. Were you sad to see her leave? Yeah, I liked Victoria. I did. Uh, I, I I liked. We got we got along. She, I don't know. Uh, she just had sort of a sixth sense about me, and and I think me about her. I know she. Uh, well, I see her in the mornings or whenever, and I, and say, and she'd say, "How you doing, Kenny?" And I say, "Fine." And uh, a few minutes later, she'd come up to me and she'd say, "Tell me how you're doing." I mean, she just. I mean, if things were going well, why she knew that, and it, 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 she was very intuitive. Uh, and very, we were very much in tune to each other, I think. And so when she left, I don't know, I didn't really think about it in that way because I thought, well, if I'm not there, what's the storyline going to be? I mean, who's, who's going who's gonna to fight with JR? So that was that. I spoke last week with Cherie J. Oh, Wilson. Cherie, yeah. 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 She had an interesting story for me. I think uh, in one of the scenes at one of the oil barons uh, club uh, nights, she wore a, a red dress and uh, she told me that she kind of serenaded her sing- singing the Lady in Red track. Do you remember that? So great. You know, because I came I came to work one day and I had heard that Lady in Red on, on the radio. Yeah. And I was jumping up and down. I thought I loved that song. I really, <laughs> really loved it. And we were at the All Barons Club, and she was my date. And she comes there. Step, well, she, I guess I'm repeating her story. She came there, and we were out on the dance floor, and here she is in this red dress. So we were rehearsing. And so on the, the final rehearsal before we shot it, she took her Walkman and put the earphones on my head and played Lady in Red. Oh, my <laughs> God, it was so sweet. It was so sweet. Yeah. Lovely story, that. One lady who you probably spent the most time with on the original Dallas was Cheryl Lynn Rotino, who played your yeah. secretary, Jackie Duggan, yeah. uh, and yeah. was, of course, daughter of the original Dallas producer, Leonard Katzman. What, uh, Ken, right. are your memories of working with Cheryl? We had so much fun. You know, Cheryl... Cheryl was a butter, butterfly, mm. and she always had a tough time um, memorizing her lines. God bless her. And so when I'd have a scene with her, I would walk on set, and I says, okay, to the crew. I would say, uh, everybody gets an extra car payment this day, today because we're, we're not going to finish on time. You know, and it was <laughs> this really good-humored uh, rapport between between Cheryl and I. And she was a nice person, and, you know, I was so... I was so touched when she passed away because I had, I remember distinctly, I had gone down to a neighboring town. A friend of mine was having a, I don't know, I think a 50th birthday, and he was having a roast. And I was the keynote speaker, and he had been one of my, one of my two closest friends. So I had driven down to this town to go to this roast, and I had told my wife I would call her when I got down there. And so I called her, say, I'm here, and, you know, I'm, I'm the last one to speak tonight, so I, I don't know how late I'll be. And she says, well, Lenny Katzman just called me, Cheryl's dad, and said that he needed to talk to you, and if not uh, tonight, then call him first thing in the morning. And I said, okay. So I, I called Lenny right then and there, and he said, uh, would you be willing to speak at uh, Cheryl's services tomorrow? And I said, yes, uh, yes. So I went in and I told my friend's wife, I said, you know, you have to put me on now because I have to go home. Mm. Because I got in the car and I thought, you know, God, what what do I say? What do I say? And I think God put his hand on me because I did do a eulogy for her. And uh, it was my understanding because uh, it was a, a Jewish ceremony. And I, it was my, I don't know if this is true, but it's my understanding that only the the rabbi was allowed to speak, but it didn't happen then because uh, they called me up to speak. And I, I was really, I was really touched by that. That uh, I was touched that Leonard would ask me to be the one to, to say something. Mm. And uh, it, it, it was touching. It was touching, and I felt so bad for Lenny and, and uh, his wife. You know, it was just tragic, real tragic, because she was a young woman. 
Ken, have you any memories of working with uh, the two Digger Barnes on the original Dallas series, played, of course, by yeah. David Wayne and Keenan Wynn? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what interesting, when I was uh, 20 years old, why I had gone to the neighborhood playhouse in New York City, and I didn't have my equity card, and uh, one of the heads of the department there said, uh, yeah, Kenny, I can get you a job at uh, Fayetteville Summer Theater up in upstate New York uh, to do the lighting because I had fiddled around with the lights there. The, the fellow that said that was a, a lighting director had did many, many Broadway shows, Paul Morrison. And I said, sure. So I didn't know a hell of a lot about it. But I went up there as uh, the head of uh, the lighting and I lit all these shows that would come in. Uh, uh, various shows would come into the Summer Theater. And one of them was called a musical called The Ponder Heart, and David Wayne was the star of it. Now, I didn't really get to know him when I was there, except uh, then when Dallas came along, I thought, well, boy, life really takes a full circle here because here I am, and he's playing my dad. And then, unfortunately, when it came time the show to get picked up, he was committed uh, to something else, and so then that when they hired Keenan, and uh, he was kind of legendary, too. Had been, has had had an incredible career. <laughs> I know Keenan used to always ask me to go to the commissary for lunch. So I was flattered. So I'd go to lunch with Keenan, and he would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And I would try to say something, and it uh, didn't seem like he was paying much attention. And then he would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Well, it got kind of boring. And so I had said to somebody one day, I said, God, Keenan wants me to go have lunch with him, and I don't know, you know, because he never hears me, you know, he, he just keeps talking. And they said, well, Kenny, Keenan's got a hearing aid, and he doesn't like the noise in the commissary, the clanking of the dishes, so when he gets there, he just turns his hearing aid off. <laughs> oh, 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 that, that, explains, that explains a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I, I gracefully uh, <laughs> stopped going up as much as before. But yeah. <laughs> he was a character. Yeah.